Hello, community. Today we look at image based reinforcement learning and we look at a new, brand new research for adapting image based reinforcement learning policy via predicted rewards. And we are finally cracking here the domain shift problem. Because you remember in my last video where I showed you here behavior cloning. We talked about the two limitations. And in my last video, I showed you that we do have this kind of error correction, the residual reinforcement learning. And I told you we have only one problem left. And this one problem is the distribution shift. So if we have now a huge vision language model here on Earth, and we want to copy here the intelligence to a rover on Mars to an edge device, how we do we cope here with distribution shift? And this is what we're going to look at today. So what is the definition of domain shift or distribution shift, domain adaptation or domain transfer? It all refers to a change in the data distribution between the source, so this means the training domain, and the target on Mars, the testing or the deployment domain. We have data distribution changes or visual appearance changes, whatever they are, you have different lighting, different texture, different colors, different camera angles, different background objects. This is what we call in general a domain shift. And if the Mars rover is not able to do its job because the lightning changes on Mars or you have an AI machine in a next room and you have there different colors or different background object, then suddenly our AI system will fail. So how we cope with the domain shift problem? And there is something beautiful, because now we have a new research, the reward prediction model, and this provides you a mechanism to cope with domain shifts by enabling policy fine tuning in the target environment where the ground truth rewards are unavailable. So this beautiful research by John Hopkins University. We have the new reward prediction model, mechanism to cope with the domain shift, enabling a policy fine tuning in the target environment. So what we have to do, we have a combination of the reward prediction function and a maximum entropy reinforcement learning. And if you look in detail, we even have three objects. We have the reward prediction model that we're going to examine in detail. Then we have the maximum entropy reinforcement learning algorithm that we're going to imply, balancing here expected reward in the action entropy. And then we have a fine tuning process of our policies. But please note, we have this here in the target environment with the reward prediction model frozen. So this is going to be interesting. Let's start. We have two phases. In the source environment, you remember we are talking here about imitation learning or behavior cloning between a source environment on Earth and the target environment on Mars, for example. So the source environment, we have the training phase. And here now, with this new methodology, we have the policy and the reward prediction function are jointly learned. So this means we collect transition. This means observation, action, rewards, and the next observation of the source environment. And then we train both policies. So we train the policy function using the maximum entropy reinforcement learning algorithm with the collected rewards. And we train the new reward prediction model to minimize the prediction error. If we have done this, we enter phase number two, the fine tuning phase. Now we interact in the target environment. We collect new transition and the experiences we now store in a replay buffer, frozen. Those stored experiences are then used to compute the reward prediction, which in turn fine tune the policy and how we do the fine tuning of the policy, of course, again with a maximum entropy reinforcement learning algorithm. So you see, this is our master plan for today. The very nice thing is that this methodology was also evaluated on a simulation to real transfer task with a robotic arm. So exactly the topic that I showed you in my last video, demonstrating its capability to adapt the policies from our simulation to the real world environments. So 
significant advancement in adopting image-based reinforcement learning policies. So whatever we have, now we make a jump from our large language model to our vision language model. And there, if we have a domain shift, now we can cope with this with this new methodology. So this was the introduction. Now we can start. Beautiful. So at first, for my green grasshoppers, the standard reinforcement learning framework, where an agent interacts with an environment over a sequence of discrete time steps. And at each time step, the agent receives an observation O, at the time T, from the complete observation space, capital O, it takes an action A at the time T from a set of all the possible actions, capital A in the capital A space, and receives a scalar reward R at the time T. And now in the standard reinforcement learning, the goal is now to learn a policy pi that maximizes the expected cumulative reward. And here you see the formal for the cumulative, expected cumulative reward. Now, some of you ask me, hey, can you explain this a little bit more in detail? Of course. So let's go to first summarization, summation. So if we have here the sum, discounted, this here, this expression here is the discounted cumulative reward, or R, as I told you, is the reward received at the time step T. And Y is here the discount factor raised to the power of T, reducing the value of rewards received later in the sequence. I'll explain this in a second. And then we have the expectation E. Calculate the average of this cumulative reward over all possible sequences of all possible states. Now, one question was, is this a multiplication? No, look, the formal definition of an expectation mathematically, if you consider the set of all possible trajectories, T or tau, that the agent can experience, the expectation is defined here. This is our formula, and now you see it here in detail. So what you have, you have two sums. So T or tau represents here the trajectory or sequence of state and action, like in my last video. Then we have here the probability of a trajectory t or tau occurring under the policy pi. Then we have the inner summation. This computes here the discounted cumulative reward of the specific trajectory t or tau. And the outer summation averages these rewards over all possible trajectories weighted by their probabilities. So I think, I hope that this is now clear. This is how we operate. Again, what we our elements in the formula for my green grasshoppers, we have a policy pi. This is the strategy that the agent uses to decide which action to take given a particular states. It maps here observation or the states to specific action of our action space. And formally, it is a probability of taking the action A given a specific state S. Expectation E is now denoted as calculated the expected value of the cumulative reward when the agent follows the policy pi. This involves averaging all possible sequences of the state and action that the agent might encounter while it is following the policy pi. Then we have the sum over the time step, we have the reward function that you know from my last video, and we have a discount factor, and this will be explained a little bit later. So there we have it. Now, our complete formula for the standard reinforcement learning is we have to maximize J. So the objective in reinforcement learning is to find a policy pi that maximizes J. And this means finding a policy that results in the highest expected cumulative reward over time, taking into account the discounting of future rewards. And here now, what is this discount factor? Why? It controls how we value the future rewards compared to the immediate rewards or the midterm rewards. So if you have now a higher value of Y, this means that the future rewards are more heavily considered, while a lower value of Y means immediate rewards are prioritized. So you have your short-term and your long-term goals. And this is something you can play with depending on your specific task. If you look here for a long-term task where you have a lot of steps, you have to decide how you build your why. Conclusion, final formula is a fundamental concept in reinforcement learning, representing the expected cumulative reward that an agent can achieve by following the policy pi. Great. Now, based on this standard, now we have our new training and fine-tuning here 
our predictive reward fine-tuning. And as I showed you, we have two phases. We have the training phase and the fine-tuning phase. And now you already know what is going on. And now you just have it here a little bit more in detail with all the parameters in detail. Now let us talk about this other new topic, the reward prediction function. What is it? Why we need it? We just denote the reward prediction function as phi, takes an observation O and an action A, and it outputs a scalar reward prediction or hat. A neural network is utilized to model this function, which we denote as phi with the parameter theta. To train this neural network to minimize the discrepancy between the predicted reward or hat and the actual reward or. And this discrepancy is measured by the mean squared error that you know, and you know this equation. The other that I told you is now our entropy. We go now for a maximum entropy reinforcement learning algorithm to optimize our policy pi. But now during both our phases, we have this in the training phase and in the fine tuning phase. Now, if you recall that our original reward function from the standard RL was this, was j, now if we go with the maximum entropy reinforcement learning objective, <laughs> this is now to maximize the sum of the expected rewards and the conditional action entropy. So we have an additional term here, and this additional term h of pi is here, or it denotes here the entropy of the action distribution. And this entropy coefficient alpha balances now again the reward and the entropy terms against each other. If you see this the first time, never mind, but this is what we're going to code. This are exactly the formula that we will code. So you have to understand each summation going from what to where why we have those alpha coefficients, how we start with what value we start with alpha, and, and, and. So I hope to make it a little bit more clear why we have to use this. Now, of course, you see here, some solution to our problems are known, are mathematically known. For example, we can employ now a maximum entropy reinforcement learning algorithm, such as SAC, to improve the policy performance on the unknown true reward objective, even, yes, yes, yes. And now you have to know that in January 2019, UC Berkeley and Google Brain published this, the soft actor critique as a C algorithm and application. And there they showed you this soft actor critique algorithm, exactly how to calculate this. So we built on what we know, but you have to know that there is the solution already available for you, but we just have to understand what is going on in this new methodology and why we've chosen certain parameters and why we combine our elements in the way we do it. And if we do it right, and if we follow here the scientist here at the computer science department at Johns Hopkins University, we now can cope here with the domain shift in our visual reinforcement learning. And we have a novel approach. We have proved the predicted reward fine-tuning methodology so for adapting policy under a domain shift. So whenever you have that your environment changes or you have a different light source, you have a different camera angle, or you have any other domain shift in your data, this is a methodology you can use. And here we end now this with the wording here of our researchers. In summary, they say, our results demonstrate the robustness of our method in handling this domain shift introduced in both the simulated and in the real environments. And the substantial improvements achieved by our approach, and they give you in their paper a detailed analysis if they compare it to other current methodologies, and they show you that their approach has the best performance today, end of July 2024. So there you have it. Now we have coped here also with the second open problem of behavior cloning in imitation learning. 
So there you have it, a beautiful and novel approach, predicted reward fine tuning. And yes, you are right, of course it has to do with the residual reinforcement learning based fine tuning of my last video. So you see, the fine tuning and reinforcement learning, they now come together, they fuse together, they melt together, and we have to understand what is happening in those methodologies. Because if you just look at the code, believe me, it looks a little bit complex, and you might say, I have no idea why, why we write this particular kind of code. What is the idea behind this predictive reward fine-tuning? And now with this video, I hope you enjoyed it. You found some new information, you have some new ideas, and it would be great to see you in my next video.